Hi there. In this lecture, we're going to learn about what is cloud computing. A cloud computing is renting your resources, or for example, a storage, or maybe a computer, or maybe a VM, for that matter, uh, from a different company. So when I say different company, it can be, for example, the cloud service providers. When I say cloud service providers, it can be a Microsoft or Amazon or Google or maybe some other company. So we are going to rent from them and we would be using that specific computers with a, a different uh, CPU or maybe with the different hardware configuration. So ideally we are using their server from their, on, from their data center. So what would happen is this is the full responsibility goes to the physical hardware uh, relevant to cloud service provider and inside the data would be protected by us or the data what we wanted to put it into it is comes to us. So the physical hardware requirement goes to the cloud service provider so let's take an example like computing power say when I say computing power like uh, these are the words which we normally use it within the cloud computing let's say computing power or compute power so what it means is like a it can be a Linux server or Windows server with the maybe which has a web application or it's just a server which you are using it for the computing purpose and also you have the storage when you see storage maybe you're storing some kind of files folders or maybe a database is stored so that's called storage and the networking is such as a securing the connections between your cloud provider and your company between or within your resources you're protecting not to compromising anything for the public because these uh, cloud computing resources can also be you can be communicated from the public cloud or public network such as internet for example and now analytics is a visualizing telemetry and performance data this is uh, become as vital these days to uh, visualize what is happening within your computing with the help of your artificial intelligent and, and machine learning so let's jump into the uh, a visualization purpose so that you would be easily understanding what exactly the cloud computing services when is because we started with the computing power so let's jump into that specific one so which is uh, in this case cloud computing services to begin with that for example uh, if you're quite in new already or maybe you or if you have already windows admin experience or maybe a good professional uh, with the development skills then you might have already know that you can create a physical on a physical machine you can create virtual machines right so the, within the virtual machine you can host different operating system and then um, you can like for example in this case Linux can be hosted or maybe you can call a Windows 10 machine and then you can install the applications this the entire thing can be done within the normal physical machines on top of physical machines so this is how they are gonna give you as a rent so we talked about uh, renting of resources from Amazon or Microsoft or Google it means that they would have a physical hardware and what they're going to do is they are going to install the host operating system on top of it it could be they install the hypervisor controller for example here it could be a VMware uh, it could be a hypervisor like Hyper-V, uh, Hyper-V OS and then on top of it they are creating different VMs which are um, which has fully integrated with the cloud computing that means on a one click they can um, they can create the VM with the desired operating system and the desired applications so that's how it's gonna work now there's another concept called containers which we are gonna learn in the upcoming lectures if you can you know come up here this is where we're gonna learn about containers and also we're gonna learn about the serverless applications so serverless applications also we're gonna um, get to know what exactly the serverless applications so to begin with that um, just to give you an introduction on the containers so containers are similar to VMs but it is a little bit of uh, uh, higher than the VMs when it's a higher actually it is a micro 
uh, containers uh, microcomputing services let's see uh, you have the physical machine which remains the same here the ho host operating system same but here container engine will be there so there's and the software that called container engine on top of it you would be actually having container 1 container 2 container 3 so what would happen is uh, within these containers you can install the application so it is uh, fully um, without any dependency on the operating system whereas here there is no dependency uh, if you see here there's no dependency but here the applications are dependent on the guest OS so that's where it, it is you know dependent so it is next layer of virtualization now when you go back to the serverless um, engine or the serverless programming or serverless uh, services altogether uh, where you don't need any server so if you see here you need to have at least a service right uh, but in this you don't control or you don't have a server for example uh, you what you would be doing is you would be building everything into the uh, functions model so one triggers one event will trigger another function and that function will trigger as another one for example you book a ticket and the ticket is an event uh, once it is triggered as success uh, it would send an email as a confirmation and that email uh, would acknowledge somewhere so a flow will go on uh, because everything everything is a module specific to the functions so by using these function models it's actually uh, more secure and more easiest way and you no need to pay um, for the server cost all you have to pay is just for the execution of that code or that function so that's how it's going to work the serverless computing so let's jump into the more uh, understanding of what we what we have so far talked about for example we talked about the computing power a computing power is nothing but your physical hardware on top of it you're going to create a vms so that on the vm you would be logging and you would be installing the applications now when we talk about the containers a container is uh, basically uh, it's isolated execution environment altogether uh, for your application let's say you have application one and application two or maybe application one with the 1.0 version application 2 with the 2.0 so you can install you can uh, you can onboard those applications into your containers because these containers uh, have fully isolated environment altogether and they are similar to VMs expect except they don't require a guest operating system so that way you can uh, think about it and these applications and it's all dependency is packaged into a, something called container and than uh, the standard runtime environment used to execute uh, execute these applications so this will allow your um, applications uh, start very quickly because there's no operating system inside and it's just the app that needs to be launched and this has been actually come up with an open source project called docker is one of the leading uh, platform for managing containers docker containers are uh, provided an efficient and lightweight approach to applications and development because they allow different components of the applications to be deployed independently within your um, different containers and multiple containers can run on a single machine uh, because uh, it's just a package altogether and containers can be moved between machines and there's no dependency on that and the uh, the uh, portability of the container makes it easy for any of the application developer or any of the applications to deploy it into multiple environment either on premises or it can be a cloud so it's often no changes to the application uh, again once you have developed that you don't need to you know change it it just you know onboard it and forget that application or that container it works on its own now if we go back to this uh, serverless computing so this serverless computing so far what we learned is we we said we want to have application we want to have VM or we, we want to have the at least a docker to host that application now this applications that is a serverless computing is uh, like whatever the you you have the application the application code works without creating configuring or maintaining your server that means it this the code itself the code the core idea after it is the application will be broken into uh, separate functions altogether which would trigger uh, 
one action or one event to other one will be you know correlated or co it's, it's like passing a, a function to another function and from there it's gonna trigger so if the execution is completed it would you know wait and uh, this is the ideal for the automated tasks for example you can build a serverless uh, process that automatically sends an email confirmation after customer makes an online purchase as we explained the serverless module uh, or the model uh, completely differs or different from VMs and containers because in the VMs and containers you are going to pay for or the execution time for the VM or the containers but or the processing but here it's all about uh, you only pay for what exactly uh, processing like let's say uh, you you have a server in the vms or the, in the containers uh, which contains this example one which uh, which sends an email so you have to pay for the total cost of the vm uh, regardless whether the customer purchase or not but in the if you go for the a model called serverless computing you would be only paying when a customer buy the product then only we need to send an email right so once the mod once the function called uh, purchase that mo uh, purchase that product was executed the another module another function will trigger to send an email so you are actually isolating the cost to keep the 24 by 7 instead of that you are actually uh, paying for only one time uh, one execution cost and that makes more easy and more cheap for you so this architecture doesn't work for every app uh, definitely so you need to have is uh, a dedicated logic or a for sure business case logic then uh, it works uh, very well now when we talk about the storage um, like whatever we do on the servers we talked about computing we talked about uh, VMs we talked about dockers we talked about serverless but at the end you are going to store something somewhere that means you have to pay for that that's where the storage comes into the picture for example you're buying a movie ticket online or you're looking for a price for online item taking a picture and sending an email or leaving a voicemail in all these cases you're going to actually uh, uh, you're going to store somewhere so the storing is a different purpose uh, for example photo storage is a different and triggering an events or looking for a price is completely different so it all it all has a different business case similarly cloud providers typically offer services that can handle all type of data for example uh, we talked about buying movies or the files so this would definitely store into a different purpose but uh, what they have done is they have segregated um, what model is suitable for you for example you're just using only photos uh, to be in a store or maybe a small uh, files so in that situation different storage type is suitable for you that's how you're gonna store it so let's uh, go into the more for example if you wanted to store text or movie clip you could use a file on a disk uh, that's one of the example if you had a set of relationship such as an address book and could take more structured approach like using a database so that's where you can store um, your data the advantage of using cloud-based data storage is uh, you can scale to meet your complete needs and you no need to worry about your on-premises way like whether i'm filling up my disk or not so you would be you know, paying for what you have used so if you find that you need to have more space or more storage for storing your movie clips or you can pay a little more and add your available space in some cases the storage can even expand uh, contract automatically so you pay for exactly what you need to uh, uh, choose in or what you have chosen or or any given point of time that whatever you have used for that only you would be you know, paying so I hope this is useful for you to understand about computing and storage and serverless computing containers so the end of this summary for this lecture would be every business has a different needs and requirements so 
cloud computing is a flexible and cost efficient which can be beneficial for every business uh, whether it is a small startup or it can be a larger enterprise it would be suitable at the same time not all the applications are suitable for the uh, cloud so make sure that you know you also read that